Well, good evening. It is uh, Wednesday. I'm getting started just a little bit later. I apologize for that, but I, I, I have a message this afternoon, and it's devotional more so. And what I would like to share with you is I would entitle it Water Advisory. I'm going to be bringing a passage of Scripture from 2 Samuel 23, 13 through 17. In the month of August here at Okalona, what we are hoping to do is have Active Kindness Month. I've been thinking about acts of kindness and some of the things that we can do, and it it reminded me of an act of kindness that um, that I experienced as a boy. I would go to uh, I would often spend a lot of my young days um, going to Jackson County in the McKee and Tyner area. And, and while there, I would spend a couple weeks, maybe uh, a week or two, with my, with my grandparents. And, and while there, I was able to um, uh, just spend some time with my grandpa. And, and I asked him one day, I said, uh, hey, could I wash the Oldsmobile? Now, you all know I love to detail vehicles and I love to detail cars. And this was even well before I was driving. So... Um, my grandpa, one of the greatest men I've ever known on my mother's side, he uh, he had said to me, you can, but please be aware that don't waste the water. If I was to give you a theme tonight, don't waste the water. He, he said, we have a well, and he said, there's only so much water in there, and you're used to being on city water. Well, this... We've been in quarantine, many of y'all know that, and we're almost through, and so glad, no symptoms, everything's all clear here. But during this quarantine time frame, I was uh, able to detail m my own vehicles. Uh, you know the old saying, uh, a plumber has a leaky sink, a mechanic, his car don't run, and a detailer, his cars never get cleaned up. Well, I finally cleaned up my vehicles today, and I was thinking, and I was working on them yesterday as well, Came in the house wanting to get a good cool drink as I like to get it out of the refrigerator um, on the front door there, just put the cup up to it, get me a good cold drink. But yet the answering machine was flashing. I go over and I pushed it yesterday and, and it said that there is a boil water advisory and not to drink the water. And I thought, wow, here I was, really hot, thirsty, I wanted to come in and get a drink, but I couldn't do it. You know, sometimes we take things for granted. Sometimes we're just used to always having water and everything being right there. I think often we take our God for granted, our friends for granted, and even being able to offer acts of kindness even at times like this. I want to share with you a passage of Scripture from 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 13 through 17 is yesterday, when that happened, a verse of Scripture came to my mind about David and some mighty men that he had that responded to in a very kind way. The passage of Scripture says this, And three of the thirty of the chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Raphim. And David was then and on hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that I would give me, uh, that, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. And nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but he poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did he, did these three mighty men. In our culture, we really don't think so much about um, how blessed we are. How blessed we are to have water, how blessed we are to have our electrics, to how blessed we are to have home, shelter, food, all these things. Many times, you know, we just go to the supermarket if we get water or we need water, but understand the culture at this time frame. This is war water. 
war water was something of a it was just something as a precious item to have your water have your canteen filled have your jugs filled up it would have meant a great comfort to them and david just has a reminiscence it's it's almost like a hankering i don't know if you know what a hankering is but sometimes i get a hankering that says man i i sure would like to have whatever comes to your mind for david he thought about the Philistines, something that he loved, taking away where he was, where he was brought up, out of Bethlehem there, and and the water that is no longer available. Many things we have where we don't see as being available anymore. But here, King David, he he just had a hankering for the water, and he wanted it. I want to give you three quick points tonight. One is simply the water. What about this water? Secondly is the lives of these mighty men, and then following, here we have the drink. There's a grasshopper that's hopped on my phone. I'm going to have to move him, little fella. I'm going to let you go free, okay? Hop on over there. So three things, the water, the lives of the mighty men, and the drink offering that's poured out to God. Now, modern society, we really don't understand. We take so much for granted and just like the water right now, I still believe that we're under a boil water advisory. And um, so I, I know that sometimes we value uh, things, but sometimes we, we don't really appreciate everything. We got water. Sometimes we leave half bottles sitting out on the shelf or out, out on the counter uh, wondering whose is this or what. Water's a very uh, precious item, especially in the time frame they had it and, in fact, the time frame that we have it. Just wait until it's not available any longer. The next one is this. Um, he placed a high price on the life of these men. You know, when someone makes a comment or something in passing that says, I really would like to have or I would like to do this, act of kindness means that you don't just hear what they had to say, but you act on it. These men could have just went on to sleep, going on about their business, but they saw somebody in need and they knew that they wanted something and they stepped out of their comfort zone, in fact, putting their own lives at risk to go into a Philistine-occupied territory to get David a drink of water. I don't expect anybody right now to drive to Jackson County, go over to McKee and Tyner and find that little house that um, my grandparents had and go and just knock on the door and say, hey, Brother Jason said he sure would love to have a drink of that well water. I don't know if you've ever had well water or not. You probably think, why in the world would you even want to drink it after you've had it? But there is something that reminisces that takes me back to that house all the time. Um, what little comments do you make to folks to say, hey, I sure would like to have this or that? I think about this. These guys noticed it, and they took advantage of it. Right now, acts of kindness, we have received some amazing acts of kindness. We've received... Food, folks, I've had some people drop off just items that no one would ever think that we would be in need of, but, we, but we've gotten them. God provides, and I'm amazed at how he has been providing at times like these, the sacrifice that people have made. These folks were willing to give of themselves and give of their lives so that someone else could just have, just being nice to somebody. Anymore, we live in a society where sacrifice, sacrificing anything, not just giving something up, but sacrificing gives a, gives a whole new meaning to what these guys did. They were willing to lay down their lives to see that someone had provisions and needs met. Well, the third one is, is a valued drink offering before God. I've often studied this passage of Scripture. I've often referenced and looked back to it, and I thought, what would you do? You go to th such extreme measures to perhaps take someone a gift. Let's just say someone dropped off a jug of water at your house. For us right now, someone dropped off a soup or dropped off um, a cake. Mm -hmm. How kind everybody has been. If you dropped off those things, what would it be if I just said, Hey, thanks for this item that you had just brought me. And I turned around and said, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice this to you. And I just dumped it or poured it out. How would you feel about that? Many of you, like I would, be like, well, I'll be. You don't know what I did to go and to get that for you. You don't know what I sacrificed. You don't know the time that I gave that I would go and I would get these items for you just so you could pour it out and so that you could dump it out. 
you've got to understand the culture and you've got to understand the mindset of what was happening here within this war frame, within, uh, within this region and within this area. This was a sacrifice that these men made that was honorable. An honorable gift that was worthy of bringing to the Lord. David took this water that I know that he would have loved to have drank, that he would have loved to have tasted and would have loved to put to his lips, but it meant so much to him. Beyond sentimental value, it was sacrificial value. And it was such a sacrifice for him to say, as much as I would love to be able to pour this up and take a drink of it, I understand what these three individuals did for me. And what they did for me is honorable and acceptable before God. And he took that water and he poured it out. I don't see where these men got upset. They didn't get mad at him and say, you jerk. How could you do such a thing? Uh, see if I ever do anything nice for you again. That wasn't it at all. These guys were humbled at their honored sacrifice that they had made that David saw thought so much of their sacrifice that they were willing that he was willing to take it and give it unto the Lord. It's amazing when people do things nice for us and what an act of kindness can do and just being nice and kind to somebody else. I challenge you. This is Act of Kindness Month that we're celebrating here at Oklahoma and I'm implementing it in my own life and it's so hard to do that at home. You folks have already displayed acts of kindness by just a kind word, by doing a deed, but pick up on what people say. Uh, see what they have need of, and try to meet and think sacrificially, not thinking of your own selves, but thinking of the needs of others. That's what we do here at Oklahoma, and that's what I want to do for you. Um, that's what my grandpa instilled into me at a very early age. Don't waste the water. Don't waste the moments. Don't waste the things that we've been given and always see um, an opportunity to give and pass on something to someone else. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we've went through our devotion this evening, it wasn't a waste. And I thank you for all those that have tuned in tonight. I hope that this is not a waste of their time. I value the moments. I value every view of someone just taking time to hear what I have to say and share about my God Almighty, who has been so good so loving, and so kind. How could we not be kind to others, especially at times like these? Because we have the love of you, Lord, in us, we should also want to share that love with someone else, sacrificially. Not just giving of our extra, but going above and beyond. If we would do that, we would show the world that Christ lives in us, and they would want you in their life as well. I'm thankful for this, for every view I'm thankful for my grandpa, and I'm thankful for the water. Lord, I pray for the water department. You may not, maybe many people just take it for granted and take those that work on the lines and so forth for granted, but I'm very thankful, and I say a special prayer for those that are out there working to be able to make means and provisions so that we can have these things that we take for granted. Lord, we love you, and we lift them up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're still watching, I am uh, encouraged, and I want to give you just a brief update about our home and about our family. Hey, um, we are doing great. There's no symptoms, no signs. But I do want to extend this video just to give you a little brief update. Um, just because there's no symptoms, no signs, we have been staying home. Uh, it's been hard for us not to get out all the rippling effects, but the submitting to authority uh, in, a, in a world today that doesn't want to submit, doesn't want to do what we're supposed to do, I'm trying my best to set the example. But I am released this coming Sunday, and this Sunday we invite you to an in-person service at Oklahoma as we are going to be having our Acts of Kindness official kickoff this Sunday morning and also a surprise Sunday night as we're going to be having movie night at Oklahoma. Looking forward to sharing a very special uh, documentary about Billy Graham and his life. So um, I look forward to seeing you at Oklahoma Baptist Church this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for just uh, your viewing and loving such an awesome God that we have and such that we serve.